Hi, welcome to the witch house. Pull up a chair, have a sit, and let's chat. And so I'm going to chat about um, life and my health and um, what's happening. So um, this, I think, kind of also goes along with my uh, journey with grief. So I am uh, seven months from uh, when I lost Andy. As a matter of fact, tomorrow will be seven months to the day. And I'm just now finally, you know, starting to get back into life and tarot and and everything else, but the biggest thing is I'm getting back into my health. Now, when somebody passes away, when you're grief stricken, the first thing that automatically goes out the door is your care of yourself. So for me, I quit taking all my medicines, everything just went out the door, uh, food out the door, and, um, you know, after a couple of months, probably three months, once I got situated in the witch house, you know, when I first got moved in, the very first thing I did was get back on my medication because then the, the stress of everything happening with the family bullshit and all of that, it was over and I was going to be okay and I was in my own place. And so I started on my medications again, but I still ate pretty crappy. So um, for those of you who are unaware, I am a type 2 diabetic and an asthmatic. So I control my diabetes with pills and food. Um, and needless to say, the food went right out the window. I have been comfort eating which is normal absolutely normal there is nothing wrong with that at all um, but there does come a point where you you have to come around and you have to get back into life um, and that includes taking care of yourself because your dearly departed would not want you to um, do anything that's going to be harmful to yourself. You still have your life to live, although theirs is over. You are here for a reason, and so you need to take care of yourself. So I'm finally in that, that state of mind. Um, so there have been a few other developments, uh, which is um, I ended up having to have a tooth pulled, my very last molar. So, um, I smiled pretty good because I have all my front teeth, but I don't have any back teeth. I have no molars and I have no wisdom teeth. And when they pulled that last molar, um, they aggravated my jaw. And I have always had signs of TMJ, which is temporomandibular joint disorder. It's where um, you can hear your jaw click if you open it. Sometimes if you open it wide enough, it will actually lock. Um, I, I've had that happen a handful of times, but not often, which is pretty good. But I don't know what they did when they pulled that molar, but now I have full-blown TMJD. And it's painful because basically what it is is the it um your your lower jaw is popping in and out of joint it's popping in and out of the joint and so um yeah so uh i've been dealing with that as well and um my dentist is not a tmj specialist but um Anyway, let me, I guess I will start with the scope of things. So in March, I went and saw my primary doctor because I was drowning in grief. I thought it was going to just overcome me. 
And she saw me and she said, no, your current medications are okay and you should talk to a psychologist or a psychiatrist if you need more medication. So then she wanted me to come back and see her in three months. And of course, she wanted a blood test because at that time, it's, it's, it's time for my annual blood work to see how my sugar is doing. So, yeah. All right. So um, that was in March. I went back uh, yesterday. And... Um, I talked to her about my last visit because I told her, I said, I think you did me a disservice because all I needed was some medication to calm my nerves down and to help me sleep. And she, I said, I need to understand from your perspective why you couldn't do that for me. And she said, by law, the medication that I am already taking is at its highest dosage. So she couldn't give me any more. The only way she could give me any, any more, whatever kind of drug it is to calm me down, had to come from a psychiatrist. So I thought that was very interesting to know. And I did tell her, you understand, if I did not have the strength inside me that I did, I probably would have killed myself before I even got to a psychology appointment. So she said <clears throat> she did not realize it was that bad and she said she was extremely sorry for that. But she was happy for the feedback and she was definitely very happy about where I am right now. So consequently before I saw her, I went and I had my blood test, and my blood test results were not good. Not good at all. So, um, I have to clean up my diet completely. Completely. And um, I've been thinking a lot about going more towards a plant-based diet. Um, the older I get, the more I'm like not really all about the meat I don't know it's the bread and the carbs maybe that's the diabetes speaking I don't know I just know that you know my my taste for meat really isn't much there anymore so I'm thinking of I'm looking into it's called forks over knives yes I know it's vegan I understand it's vegan but I don't have to go that far but I'm looking into it because um, the diet has been highly successful for a lot of individuals. Um, be if you take it vegan or vegetarian, um, there are a lot of pluses to it. So um, I've got the books, and I'm I'm gonna see what what I can do about that because um, it's really strange. For the first time in my life, the only person I have to think about is myself. Um, I've been a caretaker to other people for well over 30 years. So uh, to just be beholden to myself is um, an interesting and a good place to be. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, my friend Alora Rain uh, posted something on Facebook that uh, she said she's building the life she doesn't need a vacation from. And that's exactly how I feel. I'm building a life that I don't need a vacation from. All the things I've always wanted to do but was unable to because of other people or other commitments, I am finally getting the opportunity to do now. So now if I want to do a plant-based diet, I'm not going to get any pushback from anybody because I'm just feeding myself. So... There's that. Um, the second thing I did was I went to see my chiropractor. And I was so tight and so out of joint that she said my left leg was about an inch and a quarter shorter than my right leg. So <laughs> I was some kind of twisted. Um, so she's working on me in that respect. She is also working on my jaw the chiropractor 
she's got this nifty little gadget that she, you know, puts the, the disc, the hinge disc, um, back into place. But the thing is, now that I have this, I have to be very careful with how I use my mouth. And I know you all are used to the big <laughs> kind of thing for me, but um, it's going to be a lot smaller for, you know, a little while until I figure out how to conquer this. I can't even open my mouth very wide to eat and I cannot, um, I can't have raw vegetables because I can't chew them. Um, meat has to be cut in teeny, teeny, tiny pieces. So you could say that I am learning to eat very mindfully, mm -hmm. which is a challenge because most people are used to, I still eat slower than most people, but still, now I'm really slow. So there's that. But you can see one piece at a time. I went to the doctor. I got my blood work. I know where I sit with my sugar. I'm going to make dietary changes to get that back under control and hopefully drop a few pounds that I have regained over the last six months. Um, so there's that. Then the chiropractor to loosen me up and to get my bones in the, the right area. I've also had an hour and a half Reiki session to clear uh, my, my subtle body, my energy, have somebody else do it other than me. And then I'll be also incorporating a massage in there probably after next week because the chiropractor wants, she saw me twice this week and she wants to see me two times next week. And then we'll, we'll go from there. So I'm pretty messed up as far as, you know, bone structure goes. Um, so I wanted to give you guys an update on all the things happening with me because there's quite a bit of new stuff, especially between the TMJD and, um, you know, my diabetes being a, a real problem now. So I um, hope you guys hang out with me for my journey because I'm going to be posting uh, more about it because I believe this also goes hand in hand with, with grief. I've met so many people who have been um, knocked off. Um, well, they, they do the same thing. They've done the same thing as I did initially. And, um, you know, some of them are in that now and some of them are trying to regain their health. And, um, yeah, some are in much worse condition than I am. And so uh, I want people to be aware that um, initially not taking care of yourself and eating crap food and, and all of that stuff, normal, perfectly normal and expected even. You have so many other things that you have to deal with in the, the regular world, you know, paying bills, taking care of arrangements, family members, all of that kind of stuff. It's going to happen. And unless you have some kind of disease where you're type 1 diabetic or something that is going to really detrimentally hurt your health, you know, if you have um, high blood pressure pills or I'm not saying diabetes is a, a small thing. I don't know. I guess I'm trying to say that it's understandable if, if your health slides during a uh, a portion of the time that you're initially grieving. Most people will regain their health within a, you know, a couple of months, three months, maybe, you know, I was just lazy pretty much. Um, like I said, I'm kind of getting used to this feeling of I have nobody to take care of. And so I admit I have been kind of um, lazy as of late. Uh, because my life 
had always been go, go, go. I had appointments and dinner and work and shopping and all of these things to attend to. And I don't have that anymore. And so truthfully, um, I'm enjoying my Four Swords moment of just resting because I haven't had it. And so I'm taking it now. And for anybody else who, who is in this situation, um, it's not a bad thing. And you have nothing to feel guilty about taking a rest. You've earned that rest. And so don't you feel guilty about taking it because um, it is being productive. It's preserving your um, it's preserving your soul. You know, everybody needs that. And so if you need to rest, take it and don't feel guilty. It took me so many years to finally figure that out. Seriously. So, all right, guys, that's the update, uh, the initial and I'll let you know how things go with the old jaw and the diet. Okay, much chakra love. I'll see you on the next one.